Who are the indigenous peoples of India? Who were the first to live in Thailand, Malaysia, or the Philippines? Going back far enough in history, and the answers will change with time, and this is reflected in the genetics of the modern people we see there today, with layers upon layers of different migration waves, civilizations, and genetic digressions stacked in the various groups of southern Eurasia, and in fact, the original peoples who inhabited parts of East, South, and Southeast Asia weren't exactly what we would call human, but more on that later. Early anthropologists noted the distinct genetic connections between the natives of Australia, Papua New Guinea, and the Melanesian Islands, dubbing this newly researched group as the Australoid or Australo-Melanesian race. Further study also placed the indigenous peoples of Southeast Asia, who were coined the Negritos by the Spaniards in the Philippines, meaning small black people, into this Australoid grouping as well, and it's been found through modern genetic analysis that their presence in the region was diluted by waves of ancient migrants from the north that created the modern Southeast Asian populations. However, across the Indian Ocean, indigenous peoples of South and Southwest Asia have long been noted to be genetically distinct from the Caucasian or Western Eurasian populations that preceded them and were dubbed Vedoids after the ancient Vedic tribes of South Asia, and their origin and connection was long disputed by many historians and anthropologists. Basically, there are two schools of thought. Some believe the indigenous peoples of Southern Eurasia and Oceania are descended from an earlier migration that is distinct from a later wave that eventually evolved into Eastern and Western Eurasians, while others believe that the Vedoid population of South Asia does not have a distinct ancestral origin with the Australoids, who they believe actually split to form the peoples of Oceania and East and Southeast Asia. Either way, due to the extremely long history of intermixing with other extended regionalized ancestral continuums, it's quite difficult to say for sure these days, but one of the strongest indicators from both an archaeological and genetic standpoint that the indigenous southern Eurasian populations are genealogically related is the archaic Homo sapiens subspecies of Denisovan. Denisovan was a hominid species or subspecies that diverged from Homo sapiens roughly six to eight hundred thousand years ago, belonging to Homo heidelbergensis, the same branch as Neanderthals, with their ancestors leaving Africa many hundreds of thousands of years before Homo sap, with Neanderthals settling in Europe, the Middle East, and Central Asia, while Denisovan settled primarily in the East, such as South and Southeast Asia, as well as Central Asia, with a moderate degree of overlap between their territories where Denisovan Neanderthal hybrids can be found. When modern humans traveled out of Africa and into the Middle East, there was initially extensive intermixing with Neanderthal, followed by Denisovan for those who went further east, with Denisovan admixture being found in high rates among most southern Eurasian populations, with Australoids such as Poppins and Aborigines having the highest degree of Denisovan admixture by far, around 3-6%. to Although admixture is also found in Eastern Eurasian populations, the presence of Denisovan DNA in East Asians, especially the Tibetans, actually appears to be from a second admixture event in Northern Asia, which has spread to all areas of Eastern Eurasian settlement, including East and Southeast Asia, as well as the Americas. The varying rates of Denisovan admixture in southern Eurasian populations, with some groups like the Anamanese having almost none, show that they do not actually share a common gene pool, but the reason they're grouped together is because they share ancestry from a common, unique source, whose divergent components can be found in varying levels among these populations, who have become extremely aberrant over time. Today, there are at least four unique ancestral and genetic divisions between these southern Eurasians that have developed over tens of thousands of years, with the namesake group clearly being the Aboriginal Australians, with Tasmanian Aborigines actually being very genetically distinct as well before their unfortunate extinction in the 19th century, or well, at least full-blooded individuals followed by Poppins, who have the highest degree of diversification for ethnic, linguistic, and cultural groups in the world, the Negritos, who themselves arguably have several genetic distinctions, which are at a magnitude comparable to that of the difference between the latter two groups, and the Vedoids of South Asia, with it being argued that this component was formerly found in the Middle East as well, 
dubbed the Arabian Vedoids. Unlike other major extended regionalized ancestral continuums I've discussed in the past, there was no whole lot of intermixing going on between these different southern Eurasian groups for a variety of factors, including distance and rising sea levels, which isolated many groups, most notably the Andamanese. And since they only had more primitive methods of transportation, many different tribes didn't leave their own islands for generations, literally going back millennia. One notable exception to this would be the ancient migration of peoples from the Indian subcontinent to places further east, and we're talking very ancient here, as in before the Indo-Aryans or Dravidians even spread out over the entire region, and as far back as 5,000 years ago, and possibly even further, these proto-Indians, who would have been mostly ancestral South Indian in origin, had been trading and settling in Southeast Asia, and even Australia, where it's been found that an ancient group of migrants had dispersed into the Aboriginal Original Australian population, although it doesn't appear there's been much backwards migration to the subcontinent. Contrast this with the extensive history of intermixing between Western Eurasians, wherein ancient North Eurasians dispersed into Europe, North Asia, and the Caucasus, Yamnea and Afanasyevan cultures spread out over the steppes of Eurasia, more modern Middle Eastern and European civilizations intermixed with North Africans, and of course Indo-Europeans spread throughout the entire Eurasian landmass, making it the largest language family in the world today. In South Asia, the highest southern Eurasian component is in South, Central, and Eastern India, specifically among the Adivasi tribals, including the Mandari peoples of the Northeast, who have very little Western Eurasian admixture and moderate Eastern Eurasian admixture, seeing as to how they originated from Austroasiatic peoples migrating from Southeast Asia. However, even near full-blooded Adivasi tribes such as the Toda, Kuraga, or Irula, who are very clearly physically distinct from the surrounding populations, are not necessarily closely related genetically to Australo-Melanesian groups since they are extremely divergent due to genetic drift and limited contact throughout history. The claimed Vedoid component of the Middle East predates any modern migration from India and is actually believed to be a remnant population found most commonly among southeastern Arabia, specifically the modern South Arabians such as the Sokotri, Jabali, or Shehri, very unique looking peoples who, although sharing a large amount of genetics and culture with the neighboring Arabs, have yet to be fully Arabized, although conversely other sources claim that they are simply descendants of ancient highly melanated, meaning dark-skinned, Caucasian or Western Eurasians, which is definitely not impossible. In mainland Southeast Asia, Southern Eurasian admixture is highest in Myanmar, Cambodia, Peninsular Malaysia, the island of Luzon, and especially the eastern parts of Indonesia such as Timor and the Maluku Islands, where the Malaccans are a very heavily mixed Austronesian-speaking group. There are trace amounts of Australoid admixture in southern Japan, such as the Ryukyu Islands and Kyushu from ancient Austronesian migrants, as well as parts of southern China, Taiwan, the Horn of Africa from migrants from South Asia and the Middle East, which is why paternal haplogroup T is found both in ethnic Somalis and in tribal populations of India. But perhaps most surprising is the fact that Australo-Melanesian DNA has been detected in some indigenous peoples of South America. Some have claimed that this means that the original peoples of the Americas who predate the Paleo-Amerindians were a group of Australoid-like peoples who crossed the Pacific thousands of years before the modern people groups we see there today, which is certainly a very fanciful proposition, similar to the Solutrean hypothesis, which suggests a European peopling of the Americas before the Paleo-Amerindians. However, traces of this racial group found in Amerindian populations is almost certainly a remnant from early founding populations, most likely from the original admixture event between ancient North Eurasians and Eastern Eurasians that gave rise to the Amerindians in the first place, with the Eastern Eurasians most likely having some level of Australo-Melanesian admixture from Southern Eurasia beforehand, and to date this component is no more than 2 or 3% in some Amerindian groups in the Amazon and Patagonia, particularly the Fuegi. Here's my map of Southern Eurasian ancestry in the Asia-Pacific region, and note that the percentages on this map may not necessarily align with those on previous admixture maps I've created, as some of those were simply rough drafts, and I've been revising and updating the entire time. And this component is seemingly centered around the Indian Ocean, being a majority in New Guinea, Southern and Eastern India, with significant admixture in Southeast Asia, Arabia, Madagascar, and parts of Africa. 
Although it appears fairly widespread, the southern Eurasian component of Australia is not much higher than 5-6%, to considering that many self-identified Aborigines are actually majority European, similar to the situation of natives in the U.S., although there has been some minor dispersal of Aboriginal genes into the white Australian population. Although not visible on the map, there would also be some degree of admixture in parts of Europe from the migration of the Romani from the subcontinent, and an especially large presence in the Caribbean, Guyanese territories from more recent Indian migrants. Interestingly, there are large groups of migrants from other parts of Eurasia in the Southeast Asia Pacific region, including the Indians of Fiji, mostly Bihari and ancestry from North India, but the large Indian pockets in Singapore and Malaysia are overwhelmingly Tamil in origin, who have the largest degree of original Vedoid ancestry out of all the major groups of India, despite the Proto-Dravidians most likely originating somewhere in Southwest Asia. Because these various waves of archaic migrants to the Indian subcontinent have mixed so thoroughly in the past several thousand years, it does make sense to group together Indo-Aryans, Dravidians, and even most Adivasi groups from a cultural and genetic standpoint. And this is why Australoid and Vedoid populations were sometimes distinguished in the past and often still are in the present day, similar to how Amerindians, despite most of their ancestry coming from East Asia, are usually considered to be a distinct race due to over 10,000 years of genetic divergence and intermixing with Western Eurasians. As mentioned, due to the vast area they have dispersed over and the unfathomably long periods of isolation for some, the Southern Eurasian groups have evolved to become some of the most diverse in the entire world and are one of the most interesting groups of humanity, despite largely only existing in highly admixed populations today. So go ahead and let me know your thoughts on the Southern Eurasians, or Australoids and Vedoids, and for today's poll, let me know which Southern Eurasian group you'd like to learn more about. And as always, thanks for watching everyone. This has been Mason, and I'll see you next time.